So you are a truly polyglot, right? And how many languages do you speak? Can you can you mention what are they? Uh, I know about 12. Uh, I'm fluent in about four to five, depending on the season or you know who's asking as well. Um, at the moment, uh, I just actually started becoming a, a host uh, ambassador on Duolingo. So from time to time, you might find me in a conversation event uh, on Duolingo that I host. Wow, I host English I and uh, Bahasa for now. Yeah, uh, the reason why I also uh, want to try. To, uh, hosting bahasa uh, session is so then I can practice <laughs> so <laughs> it's actually for me more than anything else but for the English se- session yes yeah, so it is meant to help uh, others out there uh, to practice uh, yeah so mentioning the language right so I'm half Malay so naturally um, uh, other than English then I would I would speak uh, Malay and bahasa Uh, and uh, my Spanish has gotten really good uh, the past few years. So I consider Spanish as my second language, actually. Uh, it has gotten better that much that it's actually better than my Bahasa or my Malay. <laughs> so, yeah, within this four uh, are the most that I, that I use. So aside from this, we have French, Korean, Arabic. Um, What about Portuguese? Thai. Or Thai, okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, Portuguese is the same thing. The thing about Portuguese and Italian, I did not or I haven't learned them um, formally. But um, if I read the textbook, I can. And on Duolingo, for example, when I try the exercise, I can properly understand what what they're talking about, and I get I just get passed through the lesson by doing the exam, you know. So I don't need the the lesson. That's how close they are. Um, like Portuguese Brazilian uh, with uh, with Latin Spanish. Portuguese in Portugal and Portuguese in Brazil are they different? Yes, just like uh, um, it's actually when yeah, it's it's quite different in terms of like let's say Malay that are used in Riau, you know, and Malay that are used in Peninsula Malaysia, things like that. So choices of words and uh, tonality, yeah. Okay, Because sorry, there are lots else? of words that are not absorbed. Uh, you know, when when Portugal came to Brazil, um, obviously that, that the language is being transferred back then. But language is always developing, right? Um, uh, it's evolving into something new. Then there are lots of words that are in Latin uh, region got absorbed as well to to Portuguese. So that's how it came about. In university, I actually took lots of uh, extra courses. I graduated my degree with so many extra courses that it, it that it was considered my minor in foreign languages. So I spent more time in faculty of foreign languages as well, uh, especially the past uh, few years before I graduated. So I took Thai course, um, Korean, Japanese, German. Uh, I actually passed German level three or four back in university I got a certification for that too but I don't use it as much so and German wow. has you know long words so <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> to uh, and uh, yeah I I also got to uh, take some French courses even though that was kind of cheating because um, I, I they gave it an exception like I skipped several levels But it was more like for me, for my GPA, you know, so because the lessons were too easy. Um, I also took Mandarin in, in university and uh, Arabic, I think, as well. Um, what else did I say? Korean, Spanish. Yes, I took some Spanish, but only for one semester. Yeah, so lots of languages uh, back in university. <laughs> Are you able to write as well? Yeah. So, see, some of these languages. Uh, so that's why it's, comp- it's 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 not easy to answer the question like how many languages can you speak because the elements of skills in each language is different, right? So, some that requires uh, special writing. Maybe can you do it or can you not do it? So, uh, the capacity of uh, me do, uh, with these languages are also different. Uh, for example, uh, in Arabic, I know how to write. I know how to read, but I don't necessarily know what they mean. You know, I think this happens with lots of Muslims uh, that are born in Southeast Asia uh, because 
we we must be able to read Quran, right? Since we were little, but uh, we were we we were learning it for from the technical point of view. We don't know what we are reading. We just need to be able to read it. Things like that. It's actually a unique perspective for some people. It wouldn't make sense. How can you uh, be able to read and write something without being able to speak it or understanding it, right? But it goes the same way. Many people learn English that way too. They can read and write, but they have problem when they speak or listening, right? So it's mm-hmm. more. All these skills are separated. So in language, it's quite a complex study. Yeah. So when you uh, go somewhere locally i mean how do you learn the language like do you learn uh formally or you uh actually also learn with the locals as well yeah with language for me i see it more as um as a target so Uh, within a few months am I interested enough and will I be able to reach my target language you know being fluent or uh, let's say being able to read and write um, so that's how I've been doing it for example when I was in Somaliland I had no interest uh, learning Somali uh, mm. nor that I tried uh, learning or speaking to them in uh, Arabic also probably because of my capacity I was there to teach English so there was not much need to do it And uh, back uh, and referring to their history, uh, you know, Somalia was Italy colony, but uh, Somaliland, that part, after Italy, they were colonized by the British. This is why mm-hmm. lots of Somalilanders they actually migrated to the UK, and their passport is actually recognized in the UK. And so, lots of Somalilanders are British uh, uh, diaspora. Um, that being said. Uh, Plenty of plenty of uh, uh, locals. They actually do understand English in, in some ways. So the, if there was no need, normally um, I would survive. Let's say just with English, then I would I wouldn't oh, w- I wouldn't want to go too far to as as far as learning the language. Uh, referring to my experience in South America, for example, um, in many places. Even in Bogota, it's the capital city. Uh, there, there are still plenty of people that cannot speak English. So you have to learn Spanish. Uh, when you're being forced in that sense, you know, and you are in the right environment, you get fluent a bit more easily. I learned Spanish by immersion first before I got the scholarship to actually learn Spanish in an institute. So that was an interesting experience for me because um, I think it worked better that way just communicate with the locals absorb yeah. all these things and naturally you're able to understand more and then yeah. uh, by the time that you get the chance to learn in a formal institute then you get to learn the grammar and then you can you get to speak properly some yeah. somehow it's probably even better than locals because you know some some less educated uh, locals may not have the exact same uh, education on grammatical parts let's say mm-hmm. 